Welcome to tonight's video on exponential functions. The definition of an exponential function is any function that the x is in the exponent. So like 2 to the x or 5 times 3 to the x. That is an exponential function. When you graph an exponential function, there's a couple things, uh, characteristics that you'll notice. Let's graph uh, 2 to the x. Notice when you do 2 to the x, negative 1 gives you 1 half because 2 to the negative first is 1 half. Um, when you put 0 in, you get 1. And when you put 1 in, you get 2 because 2 to the first is 2. You can never raise a number to a power and get zero. So that's why there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. And then the graph, negative one and one half, zero, one, one, two. It's kind of like a J curve. It goes up exponentially. So the base points are always negative 1 and 1 over whatever the base is. So if it was 3 to the x, it would be negative 1 and 1 third. 0, 1, and then 1 and whatever the base is. In this case, the base is 2. So your base points are negative 1 and 1 half, 0 and 1, 1 and 2. The horizontal asymptote always starts at y equals 0. If you notice... The domain is all real numbers because you can put in any number you want for x. The range is greater than 0 because, remember, when you put a number in and raise it to a power, it will always be positive. The y-intercept is always 0, 1 because anything to 0 power is 1. To start out with, there's no x-intercept because notice it can never equal 0 then if the base is greater than 1, the graph rises from left to right. Now, if I graphed the function 1 half to the x, one half to the x, um, the base points would be negative 1 and 2, because 1 half to the negative first is 2. 0, 1, and 1, and 1 half. So notice the function starts off here, goes there. So it actually decreases from left to right. So that's what it's saying in number 4, if the base is between 0 and 1. Also notice because these both pass the horizontal line test that they will have an inverse function. And when we talk about logarithms, we'll get into that. All right, so graphing an exponential function. The first thing you want to do is write the equation in standard form. That means the exponent is x. So using the property of exponents, I can split 2 to the x minus 2 up into 2 to the x times 2 to the negative second. Because remember, when you add the exponents, it came from multiplication. 2 to the negative second is 1 fourth. And there, this is in standard form. Remember that the number in front of the base is the vertical stretch or shrink. And in this case, you have a vertical shrink by 1 fourth. Then, if the a term was negative, you would have a reflection across the x-axis, but you do not. And then the plus 1 is your vertical shift. So you have a vertical shift up 1. Now, the base function here, the base is 2. So the base function is 2 to the x. Now, when you make your table, since the base function is 2, it's negative 1 and 1 half, 0, 1, 1, 2, and you have the horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. 
your transformations are 1 fourth y and y plus 1. So multiplying neg 1 half by 1 fourth gives you 1 eighth. And then 1 eighth plus 1 gives you 9 eighths. 1 fourth times 1 gives you 1 fourth. Plus 1 gives you 5 fourths. Uh, 1 fourth times 2 gives you 1 half. Plus 1 gives you 3 halves. Um, the asymptote is y equals 0, so 1 fourth times 0 is 0. And then 0 plus 1 gives you 1, so the asymptote moved up to 1. The x and y intercepts, the x intercept, remember that's when you set y equal to 0. So you have 0 equals 1 fourth times 2 to the x plus 1. Subtract 1, so you get negative 1 equals 1 fourth times 2 to the x. Multiply by 4 on both sides, so you get negative 4 equals 2 to the x. And remember, you cannot raise a number to a power and get a negative, so that means there's no solution, which means there's no x-intercept. For the y-intercept, you put 0 in for x, so f of 0 equals 1 fourth times 2 to the 0 plus 1. 2 to the 0 is 1, so 1 fourth plus 1 is 5 fourths. So your y-intercept is 0 and 5 fourths. So when we graph, when we graph here, our horizontal asymptote is y equals 1 because it moved up to 1. Our points are negative 1 and 9 eighths. zero and five fourths and then one and three halves so it goes up very slowly like that now our domain remember is all real numbers and now our range is going to be greater than one because the horizontal asymptote moved up to one so let's try another one. If there is a number in front of the x, you want to factor it within the exponent. So it becomes negative 2 times x minus 2 minus 1. 2 to the negative second is 1 fourth. So this is negative 1 half times 1 fourth. And then it's x to the x minus 2 power minus 1. So then we can split this up, so we just get the exponent of x, 1 fourth to the x times 1 fourth to the negative second minus 1. Well, 1 fourth to the negative second is negative 16. Or not negative 16, positive 16, sorry. Times 1 fourth to the x minus 1. So 1 half, negative 1 half times 16 is negative 8 times 1 fourth to the x minus 1. That is our function in standard form. Your base, since the base is 1 fourth, your base function is f of x equals 1 fourth to the x. Our transformations, there's a vertical stretch by 8. Since the a term is negative, there's a reflection across the x-axis. And there's a vertical shift down 1. So when we make our table, we have our base points, negative 1 and 4, because the reciprocal of 1 fourth is 4, 0 and 1, 1 and 1 fourth, 
and we have our asymptote at y equals 0. Now, we have 8 times y, because it's a vertical stretch by 8, but then we also have negative y, so you can combine it into negative 8 times y. And then the vertical shift down one is y minus 1. Negative 8 times 4 is negative 32. Minus 1 is negative 33. Negative 8 times 1 is negative 8. Minus 1 is negative 9. 1 fourth times negative 8 is negative 2. Minus 1 is negative 3. And then negative 8 times 0 is 0. Minus 1 is negative 1. So now our x-intercept, you have 0 equals negative 8 times 1 fourth to the x minus 1. Well, sorry about that. There we go. Okay, so you add 1, so 1 equals negative 8 times 1 fourth to the x. Divide by negative 8, you get negative 8 equals 1 fourth to the x, and that means there's no solution, which means in this case there's no x-intercept. Your y-intercept, you put 0 in for x, and you get negative 8 times 1 fourth to the 0 minus 1. So you get negative 8 minus 1, which is negative 9. And then you put your asymptote at y equals negative 1. You put your points, negative 1 and negative 33. We'll just put down here. We'll mark it just so we know that's what it was. 0, negative 9 and then 1, negative 3. So the graph is going to go like this towards the asymptote. Now, our domain, all real numbers, and our range is greater than sorry, less than negative 1, because negative 1 is the asymptote above the function. So it goes from negative infinity to up to negative 1. All right, the natural base E. E is a number. It's approximately 2.718, and it's called the natural base. So e to the x is an exponential function, and the key thing is to know that e is a number, kind of like pi. If I type e to the fifth in my calculator, I would get 148.41 approximately. To graph e to the x, Remember, the base points would be negative 1 and 1 over e, 0 and 1, and 1 and e. And your horizontal asymptote would still be y equals 0. Well, remember, e is 2.17, so 1 over 2.71, sorry, not 17, 2.71, is approximately 1 third and then 0, 1, and then 1 and e, which is 2.71. So the function looks like that. So that's e to the x. Notice it looks exactly similar to 2 to the x, just a little bit different number because e is 2.71. The reason why e is important is it helps us solve some exponential growth problems, one of them dealing with compound interest. There's two ways you can take interest 
interest can be compounded a number of times per year, where A is the account balance. P is the principal, meaning your initial investment. R is the interest rate, and it, you want it in terms of a decimal. T is for time in years. And in this case, N is the number of compoundings per year. So if it's quarterly, N would be four. That's how many times the interest is taken per year. Now for continuous compounding, that's where we use the E. There is no N, because it's being done continuously. So if you look at this problem here, it says a sum of 10,000 is invested at an annual rate of 8%. Find the balance in the account after five years. So that means our P is 10,000. That's our initial investment. Our rate is 0 0.08. Our time is five. And for part A, our compoundings is four, so N is four. So for part A, we're gonna have 10,000 times one plus 0 0.08 over four. And then we're going to raise that to the 5 times 4 power. For part B, it's continuous. So it's going to be A equals 10,000 times E to the point zero 0.08 times 5 power. So when you type them in your calculator for part A, you get $14,859.47. And you can type this directly in. And B, you get $14,918.25. It makes sense that compounded continuously would be more if the situations are the same because you're compounding the interest at all times. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video, and um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in class. Have a good evening.